Hey y'all, Coach Nefai here, talking about Tisha B'Av, the fast of the fifth month. I just wanted to make a short video letting you know when it is, where this minor festival day comes from in the first place, and how we celebrate it. We'll even touch on the biblical prophecies around this date, so stick around to the end. Go ahead and hit that like button and be prepared to leave a comment. Now, in the first verse we want to look at is down in Zechariah chapter 8. 8 and verse 19 which says thus saith the lord of hosts the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast therefore love the truth and peace now like we said we're going to get into the timing of the prophecy a little later in the video but this actually shows what the prophecy is these fasting days there are four of them are going to one day be days of gladness, cheerful and joyous days for the house of Judah. And you can find out in other videos that we've done who exactly Judah is. But what it boils down to is those who are keeping the feast days and minding the laws of the Torah and that kind of thing. Um, it's not really about bloodlines or family history or anything. It's actually obedience to the scripture that brings you into this so-called house of Judah. But anyway, what it's saying here is that you have these four fast days that comes throughout the year. And one day, these days are going to be joyous days or days of gladness. As of now, until the prophecy is fulfilled, they're just dress rehearsals where we just fast in remembrance of these days. Now, to understand what these fasting days are about, we can drop back to the previous chapter, chapter seven of the book of Zechariah. Verse five says, speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even these 70 years, did ye all fast unto me, even to me. So this verse right here gives a strong hint as to what these fasting days are all about. When it says right here, these 70 years, this should remind you of the exile or the captivity period for the children of Israel when they went into Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar for 70 years. So that lets us know that this fasting that they're talking about would have been started sometime around the beginning of this exilic period or this 70 years. Well, exactly what it's talking about can be found in the book of Second Kings in chapter 25, which lists all four of the fasting days in one chapter. This is where we hear about these days that we're fasting for and turns out that is all about the destruction of the temples and the harassment of the so-called house of Judah or the children of Israel. Significant events in history, which has repeated itself over time, are remembered through these days of fasting, these fasting days. Now, verse one, we'll come back to when we talk about the timing of the prophetic fulfillment of the so-called fasting days. You see, it brings up first the 10th month fast there, the 10th day of the 10th month in verse one. And then you see down the ninth day of the fourth month is a fast for the famine that occurred back there in Jerusalem about two years later. We see that in verse three. But then we come all the way down to verse eight, where it starts talking about the fifth month or the month of. It says, and in the fifth month on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. So this gets into when exactly this day falls, this so-called fast of the fifth month. Um, you see the events surrounding this fast actually started on the seventh day of the fifth month. That's when this Nebuchadnezzar actually came to town to destroy the temple. But it's over here in Jeremiah chapter 52 and verse 13 that we find out that it was actually the 10th day of the month that they actually burned the whole house down. So that's why you hear people talk about the ninth of Av and the 10th of Av. Some even start celebrating as early as the 7th of Av. It's because that's when the assault actually started on the 7th, but it was completed on the 10th when they burned the temple to the ground altogether. And then you start to see about the 7th month fast down there in about verse 25. 
But that fasting day in the seventh month, we recognize as the day of atonement. And we yet wait for the prophetic fulfillment of that day as well. So here's the reason why the fast exists. It's remembrance, like we said, of the assault on the children of Israel and the temples. And so these days of fasting are remembrance of these days and dress rehearsals for futuristic events that are to come up on the world. But the thing about it, when we look at historical events surrounding the temple, we find out that the second temple was also destroyed on the 10th of Av. So the fast of the fifth month is all about the destruction of the temple. So the prophetic fulfillment, maybe, and you guys can help me out in the comment section, may involve the construction of the third temple. It could be the time in which the third temple is finalized. We already know it's under construction, but that could be the completion date or something like that. But again, you guys help me out. What do you think? I do want to touch on the timing of this coming back to Second Kings to let you know when I believe the prophetic fulfillment will occur surrounding the fast of the fifth month as well as the fourth month and the seventh month. I actually believe it will be the year 2024, but come back and let me show you how I come up with that idea. Looking at 2 Kings uh, chapter 25 and verse 1, we see, like we said, it talks about the 10th day and the 10th month first. This is the day that the, the entire assault started. This is the time in which Nebuchadnezzar turned his eyes towards Jerusalem initially. But the thing about it, this is the date that's actually used in the prophecy of Daniel that we read about over there in Daniel chapter 12. Now, this little handout here would actually help us to walk through how we understand that the prophetic fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12 occurred in January of the year 2022. So that would have been the 10th day of the 10th month fast fulfillment or Asara Bitivet back there in January the 13th. But if you look closely here, there were two years difference between the event in the 10th month and the event in the fourth month and the fifth month. You see that here where verse one starts talking about the ninth year of Zedekiah. That's when the besiegement started. But then in verse two, that it was besieged until the 11th year of King Zedekiah. So that's a two year difference. And so this is how I come to the conclusion that even though the prophetic fulfillment of the 10th day of the 10th month was in January the 13th, with the end of Jacob's trouble for the house of Judah, we really are not expecting the other fulfillment of the fast of the famine and the fast of the temple destruction until the year 2024. But you can let me know what you think about that in the comment section as well. So that brings me to what it is that we are to do as far as the fasting is concerned. Now, there are many ways to fast that we hear about in scripture. Probably the one the most familiar to us is the fast or the food fast, fast in which we abstain from all food. But that's really only mentioned in the book of Esther. And it, when we come over to the book of Isaiah chapter 58, down in about verse six, even verse five, we find out that this is not really an acceptable fast in the sight of the Lord. Abstaining from food is really only a selfish fast that may give us heightened awareness or something like that, but it does little if anything, for our fellow man and our brother, which these fasting days are all about looking out for each other. And so we can expect these fasting days to involve them. Well, one of the fasts, the Isaiah 58 fast, we see is all about that, where we feed the hungry, we clothe the naked, we give shelter to the homeless as the way that we celebrate these fasting days. Many of us will do a lot of praying for each other on this day. Um, doing a lot of charitable deeds and different stuff like that as the dress rehearsal for these fasting days, knowing that when the prophetic fulfillment occurs, it could actually involve devastation around the world. And we will actually be called upon to go out there and do stuff like remove rubble off of people after earthquakes or heal sick people or something like that. Again, these fasting days, at least here in the year 2022, is just dress rehearsals, but we'll be ready nonetheless in case something does jump off.
the House of Judah will be ready to run in and assist humanity as is our jobs. All right, so I just wanted to get this class out, give you guys some information on these days, Tisha B'Av or Asara B'Av. If you have any other concerns or questions or anything about these days, please put them down in the comment section and I'll see you there.